Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jewel Tolentino here. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the new Camtasia 2019. Alright, so Camtasia just released their latest upgrade, latest version of Camtasia, and it's called Camtasia 2019. Last year they started with this whole calling Camtasia with the year instead of the version. So last year they went from Camtasia 9 and then they went to Camtasia 2018. And so it's no surprise that they're now doing Camtasia 2019 and then probably next year it'll be Camtasia 2020. So I just upgraded and I was playing around with the new features and I want to give you guys an honest opinion of what I think of the new version and show you some of the tools that are being offered in the new version. Alright, so the first thing is called audio leveling. So I'm going to do an example here and I'm just going to put two clips on the screen here. It looks exactly the same, like Camtasia 2019 pretty much looks the same. It's just got some some new features. Some are okay, some I don't think are that amazing, but other people might find that they're good, so it really depends on what you use Camtasia for. So this first thing is called audio leveling. So it's going to, when you have different clips, this isn't going to work on a like this one clip here that's and you chop it up and then it'll do it. It has to be two separate video clips. So this is a clearly different video than this one right here. So I've just put them on screen right now and when you first open Camtasia it's going to automatically be on already but I'm going to show you with it off and then I'm going to turn it on. So the audio leveling is going to level the audio each different audio from different videos because you some audio in another video might be really high and some might be really low so they're gonna put it at a consistent level because if you're not doing it on purpose and you're listening to different clips that are really high and really low it might be hard on the person who's watching or listening to your video so I'm gonna head over to file and then I'm gonna go to project settings and then it's called auto normalize loudness. So if I hover over here, it's going to automatically adjust the audio loudness across the clips to maintain audio consistency for this project. Now, when I first opened this, it was automatically already checked, but I took it off so that I could show you guys what it looks like. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to go apply. And you'll see here that the audio went from being really low to now they're like similar. They're not completely the same because there's different type of audio for each, but the loudness is going to be pretty much at the same level. And that's pretty much what that tool does. Now, I personally don't need to use this kind of thing very much because when I'm doing videos like this, I'm generally going to be doing it in one clip and I'm going to be speaking the same throughout. There's not really going to be a mix of clips. If you're doing maybe like a vlog style or you're filming in all different locations, then your audio levels are going to be different because everywhere is different. If I go and film outside, even though I'm talking the same, the, you know, you're going to hear the wind, you're going to hear all different kinds of sounds. So it is going to be different and it will be beneficial if you have many different clips that you are putting together and it's, it's, it's something that's going to save you time. So you can do this manually, like if there wasn't this tool, it's not like you can't do it. You would just, this just saves time by doing it all together at once, rather than you going into each clip and having to raise it and then listen and then play it again and then raise it and just adjusting. It's saving you time from having to adjust it yourself. So it is a cool tool. I personally don't use it based on the kind of channel that we have, but if I were to do like a vlog or something, that would probably be helpful for me. Next is this new feature called cursor smoothing and it's in the cursor effects area. So you basically just, if it's not already a tab that's showing up here, you click on more and go to cursor effects. And then you see here, if you hover over this, it shows like 
a crazy moving mouse and then like one that is smoother. I played around with this uh, earlier and I saw some other people using it and to be honest, um, it didn't really make a huge difference. I didn't think it was that amazing and I didn't have a problem with using the mouse where it was too erratic to begin with. And I do Camtasia tutorials all the time, so I am showing things on the screen. And I didn't see this to be an issue with my mouse that I needed to be fixing. So you guys can play around with that. It's in the cursor effects and see if it, it benefits you. But I never had a problem with it to begin with. So I, I don't see myself using the cursor smoothing um, feature. But, you know, try it out and see if you guys like it. Next are the custom keyboard shortcuts, and if you go to edit, go down to preferences, and then go down to shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are basically, you know, things that you can press on the keyboard that are going to make things go a lot faster. Now I do use a couple of them, and I'll just click out of this real quick. So ones that I use, if I click the S key, well, I have a clip here. If I click the S key, it'll split that. Instead of me at having to go over here and clicking the split button, I just click the S key. I click the space bar to, to play a video. I click that, that to stop the video. When you highlight something, you click the backspace and it deletes it. So there are like little things that you can do on your keyboard to press on different keys to save time and that's why they're called keyboard shortcuts. So when you go back to the preferences, edit under preferences and then go to shortcut, you can actually change this to your liking. So if you don't like a certain button for something and you want it to be another keyboard button, you can set that and change it. Now personally, I, like I said, I only use less than maybe seven of the shortcuts and I don't foresee myself changing any of that around. I like that the way they are right now. I use also the mouse in conjunction with the keyboard here and it works fine. So I don't I don't see the need for myself to go in and change um, how I use the, the keyboard shortcuts, but you might, you might not like things in a certain way and you, you want to rearrange it, you can. So that's, that's a new feature in the 2019 version. Next, you can add logos to themes now. So if you use themes, then you can, if you go to here, file, manage themes, and these are like the different color themes that you can use on your videos. Now this is going to be helpful if you have like those uh, lower thirds and you have your name and your logo pop up. You can customize colors and text to put your name, your title, like if you're the founder or a guru of some sort, you can put your name and the logo and your specific colors if you have specific branding. The new feature that they have here is that you can add a logo now. You could always add a logo, but you had to do it manually. But now within the theme manager, you can insert it and be a part of the actual uh, lower third formation. So I'll do an example here. Let's just use this eBay logo for now. So as you can see here, this is now going to show up here as an eBay logo. Now it's best when you have a logo that's square because it's made as a square section area and it's going to look the best if you have a square. That's why if you exit the Camtasia logo that they usually put, that's a square logo. So that's going to fit really well there. So that is a new feature. You can add logos to themes. I'll be doing another tutorial going in more depth about themes, but again, I don't really use that. I have a specific intro that pops up, a video intro that's like less than five seconds that pops up in the beginning, so I don't need to add this onto our videos, but you can if you want. Everything's all a stylistic choice, so you can, you can do whatever you want. They also have some other features like adding new backgrounds in the asset library on the Camtasia's website so you can download them from there. They also have a thing called new whip transition and I use transition so I was kind of excited to use that. So I'm going to split this, first I'll mute it. 
We'll split that and then let's add the new whip transition. So you go into transitions and just scroll through and then until you find whip transition and place it there and I'll play the video. So it's one new transition and you, it does this like spinning thing. So that's kind of cool if you've got like an action type thing happening. That looks cool. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably be using that. Next, they have this thing called block style lettering. And I'll go into some text here. So, hello, my name is Jewel. Okay, so that's normally how it would look. And if you right click on it, on the actual text, you can apply this block style text and I'm going to click on it. So now it's going to format and fit it so that it fits nicely in the box. Basically, this allows for a more stylistic way of text. If you wanted to do something like this beforehand, you would need to do, um, you'd have to size this accordingly. And it, again, it would take longer. So this is something that would save you time. So if I do another set of text here and show you something different. Something like that. Make it bigger. Apply block text. So it's going to do something like that. So you can see it's it's quite a creative artistic style. And this would take long to do because you would need to size each one of these words in different font sizes. They are all, looks like they're mainly all different. This is different size than this size and this size and this size. So that is going to save you time. Also, it's more creative. Like I will probably be using this for Arit's music videos and, you know, playing around with text that way. So I do like that new feature that that is cool. I will likely be using that. Another one that I like is that they have this new thing with spacing. So you can now change the spacing between letters and the height, the spacing between the height of letters. So let me just write my name here, right? And then when you play around with this, you can actually, let me highlight it. You can play around with the spacing. You can see that I'm putting a lot, I can squish it. I can space it out and it basically makes it into a different kind of font. So if I didn't have it so spaced out, like this looks different than this. So this is also another stylistic creative uh, feature that they're adding. And before when I wanted to create spacing with the letters in the text, I would actually put like spaces. I would go in and do the actual spaces and then, you know, I'd be locked to having it at that space because, you know, the space bar is going to put it at a certain width. But now you can actually really for real play around with it and space it out accordingly. And you can also do the height as well. This is going to allow you to design more creatively when you have these kinds of options. So you can space it out. Before, you know, I'd have to go and click the return key and be like, okay, that, that's a good enough space. But now you can be more precise with it and be more artistic with it. So that's the other feature in terms of text, the block style, and then the spacing that you have between the letters and the height of letters. I will probably be using that as well. Next, another cool feature is that you can import PDF files, which um, before you could not. And I would have to take like a screenshot and then make it into a JPEG or a PNG and then import it. But now, like this was a PDF of some tickets that I had. So I can actually go and just import this. This is a PDF. So now it just looks like it's a picture, which is good. So I think that is a, a cool feature as well. 
And probably the last one that I will talk about and I will likely use is in the project settings. Um, here you have different canvas sizes now for specific things. So I like that they added an Instagram one so it's square so that you can easily create um, you know a picture or video for Instagram and it's already going to be sized and Again, it's a time-saving feature, so you don't need to go and preset everything because there are times where I was editing and then I'm like, oh, okay, I want this for Instagram, but then I have to go and reformat everything when it was already set to wide scale, which can be annoying and it, it does take longer. So now I can just set it to Instagram, Instagram size dimensions, and then it's going to just be a lot faster and make it a lot easier. There's also one for Facebook cover video as well. So that was a little detail that I liked as well with the new 2019 version. So that's pretty much the latest Camtasia 2019 updates. There are a couple more things here and there, but those are kind of the ones that are the main features and some features I like more than others. Some I'm not going to use at all and some I'm probably going to use all the time. Overall, I do like the features and you know, if you are using Camtasia the way that we use Camtasia, we use it pretty much all the time for our YouTube channel. We are full-time YouTubers, so it was a no-brainer for us to upgrade to the new version because we do use this software pretty much every day. And anything that's going to make it more stylistic, creative, you know, I'm definitely down for. So if you guys are interested in upgrading to the latest Camtasia, you guys can head down to the description below. I will have the links for you guys. So let me know what you think. Do you guys like the new Camtasia? Do you not like the new Camtasia? Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.